uh, when you get married to me, <laughs> you sign up that you're going to be under a fair amount of stress sometimes. Uh, all right. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. I'm totally, man. I was, you are my final interview of the day, so I don't know what you're going to get. That's either, <laughs> either, I'm, either I'm in the zone or I, I'm just saying complete nonsense. Wow. Or it could be it could go one way or the other. It's either going to be the best interview of the day or the worst one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or, or the, the, this is where I say stupid stuff. Oh, well, this could be great then. Yeah. Yeah, it could be real good. It was crazy. I was thinking about this, that yesterday was six months to the day that AEW started and, you know, that you made your debut. How have these last six months been for you? I've been pretty good. Been a quite a hell of a ride. I've been uh, super busy lately, the last six, eight weeks especially. I kind of overextended myself, my own schedule. And I don't have anybody to, to blame for it or to complain about it because it's my own fault. So, like, I was, I was filming this movie, and that finally just got done with that, so I kept having to go back and forth from TV, so I, like, barely been home. And uh, now coming here a day early to do all this media, so, like, uh, just which is part of the job. But, sure. uh, yeah, so I've been uh, been pretty busy, you know? Is this the movie you talked about on Talk is Jericho? You were talking about making a movie with the guy who made the trailer for your debut. Oh, no, that's a different project. Okay. That's we're trying to make the greatest action movie of all time. Is that one still uh, happening? Yeah, well, it's uh, it's in the works right now. Okay, we got some people kind of lined up, but uh, yeah, that's kind of a kind of a fantasy thing. See, I'm not trying to like I don't really consider myself an actor per se. If something comes along that's like perfect for me or that just seems like fun, because yeah. I would do movies for the fun of them. Like I would uh, like the fight choreography and stuff is what's fun and like. I would almost just rather be the stunt guy and not even worry about being in the, you know, being in the movie. And I'll just, I'll just do the fight scenes and stuff because it's fun to do. Sure. So if something like that pops up, uh, cool. But I'm not going to be like pounding the pavement, beating on doors, trying to like I have no aspirations to like take on Hollywood or be some kind of Hollywood guy. But this like make our own movie from scratch. Mm. That's interesting to me. Like oh like we. We write it, make all the decisions. All, you know that that's interesting. It's kind of a still kind of a pipe dream, but it's could be a reality. So you know, take me inside uh, <laughs> Vegas, double or nothing. I was there, and I think Jr. summed it up best that the roof came off that place. What was it like for you standing, you know, in that uh, entranceway, getting ready to go through the crowd? What was that feeling like for you? Uh, a little surreal. It was pretty just kind of a. Uh, Focused on what I was doing. It's fairly relaxed. Uh, just kind of surreal to be in a full arena like that in front of, but it was different, different uh, promotion. It was a, whole thing was just a little uh, surreal. It had just been a weird kind of surreal few months. So that was a great moment for me because it was just kind of like a release of like, finally you can just relax and, I'm back and here we go and we're off to the races. So, cause I'd never, I'd been just kind of silent for months and months as these rumors came out that I was leaving or whatever. And I didn't say anything. And there was a bunch of, it was really awkward the last few months there. Huh. It was awkward. And no, nobody in the locker room pe didn't even know. People would be like, is it a work? Are you really leaving? What's going on? Are you leaving? And I'm like, I don't know. You know, I just kept my, I didn't tell any, I didn't tell literally anybody anything. Uh, even when I first was going to leave, you know, AEW wasn't even a thing yet, you know, so. Did you have a plan when you were going to leave where you were going to go after that? Not exactly. Just wherever the wind blows. Uh, definitely Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, independence, you know. I, know, I was kind of just, I was scanning out the scene. But pretty quickly, uh, the, the AEW thing kind of came along. Uh, and it was still top secret. And I was like, that's pretty cool. That's that's pretty sick. All right. I mean, I was kind of scoping out the landscape, see where I would end up or whatever. Yeah. But just, and, you know, then I did the thing with the video, and then I had to just kind of stay silent for a few months. I went into radio silence. I went into hiding. Uh, didn't even answer my phone, nothing, because I didn't wow. want any, uh, maybe, maybe I would answer my phone. My mom called me or something. But uh, I wanted people to wonder, like, is he going to show up at, Ring of Honor or Impact or AEW or New Japan or WWE. Mm -hmm. Or is he going to come back? I wanted people to have no idea. And I think it was pretty effective. 
And then, but the payoff to the video ultimately was pop out double or nothing, and everybody instantly got it. Yeah. They, they knew I'm John Moxley now. They weren't, they were chanting my name, not yeah. like they weren't chanting like Shield or anything. You know, like it was just a totally fresh new start instantly out of the gate. Yeah. We're off to the race, and AEW is now off to the races. Oh, yeah. So, like, just the timing of it all was just crazy, just serendipitous uh, timing. As awesome and as great as John Moxley is, and everything that's going on with John Moxley, is there anything about Dean Ambrose that you miss? Uh, nothing. I didn't uh, take with me the parts of that character, so to speak. That we're good are still with me you know so it, although it uh, seems like it's turned up to 11 now not really yeah uh yeah i'm having uh having fun man yeah. just kind of there's no uh i think the cool thing is nobody in AEW is has any kind of uh buddy they have to answer to as far as far as like nobody's uh, being unencumbered creatively. I've used that word three times today already because I keep getting asked <laughs> the same questions. And I, as the first guy says, is that word unencumbered? I think it is. <laughs> Nobody, like, Everybody can just be whoever they want to be, do whatever they want to do, whether, whatever that, all, whatever different style or presentation or whatever it is, whether it's Darby Allen or Orange Cassidy or the Lucha Brothers or me or whoever. Uh it's not like, oh, well, they like this. You don't have to go into the office and pitch, can I do this thing I want to do? Like, right. you can just pretty much just do whatever you want. Yeah. And not, to, it's not like we're just running around doing whatever we want, but kind of, kind of, because just nobody's feeling like, uh, everybody's just feeling totally free. I was describing it earlier. Like, it's almost like uh, Dynamite's almost like, one giant jam band session because <laughs> it's everybody's kind of collaborating together and working together and everybody's throwing out different ideas for stuff that's not even their stuff and everybody's got different especially when you get a bunch of different people in the same same segment working together kind of like that big brawl we did at the end of the night the other night yeah, yeah. uh and the goal for everybody everybody's goal is to just make them be standing and cheering at the end of the night and have a great show and that's kind of all anybody's worried about so it's, and everybody's just kind of riffing and going along and being in the moment and being creative and going like oh you do that i'll do this and kind of thing it's like this it's like a fish concert or something you know <laughs> even when Except you went way better because i <laughs> i do not enjoy fish concerts even when you went into the lights out match was there anyone going you know what john that might be a bit much the opposite oh my god they said bring it on yeah the opposite i would have never See, I have I am unapologetic about my love of uh, whatever you want to call it—the deathmatch style, the hardcore, whatever. I I love that stuff. Mm -hmm. My favorite, some of my favorite matches ever are like Big Japan death matches. I understand most people are going to think that's crap and that what they're not going to want to watch that. I love that stuff. Uh, but there's reason a lot of those promotions and stuff, even ECW, was kind of a niche promotion. Sure. Because a lot of people just get turned off by all the excessive gore and so forth. Uh, so I would, although I make no apologies that I like that stuff, I would never foist it upon anybody else. It's not like I walked in AEW and was like, look, I'm doing, I'm, every match I have, we're going to, is it going to be uh, crazy? Barbed Yeah, wire. like, yeah. this is all this is being brought to me. Uh, but, but I'm like, we can do that? Really? <laughs> like, I would have never imagined that we'd be able to do stuff like that. But uh, in this scenario, it was a lights out match. We've been trying to, he's been stalking me with a barbed wire broom, which I'd never seen before for <laughs> weeks. Uh, when we started this whole thing, I threw him off a 15 foot, 15 foot giant stack of poker chips, nearly killed him. So it, it was. By the time we got to the full gear, we're trying to kill each other. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you get two super creative guys, two artistic guys, no strings on them, and you put them in the violent aesthetic, and you're going to get like you. The match kind of took on a life of its own. You know, I was thrilled with it. I was thrilled with the reaction in the arena. I was thrilled with the, uh, the people that were uncomfortable. Yeah, your wife didn't seem very thrilled about it. 
Uh, you'll get it though. You know, it's you sign up when you get married to me. You sign <laughs> up that you're gonna be under a fair amount of stress sometimes. Sometimes I'm gonna come home, and I just fell down the side of a mountain. So I some mean, days we- I'll come home and I will be bludgeoned with barbed wire. You know, I. Well, we saw this the, is just how I live my life. We saw the tweets. What were what did your texts look like when you got you know backstage after that match? Oh, you got a call immediately after that. Okay. One. <laughs> yeah, just to be safe, you know. <laughs> I don't need no. I don't need no heat, you know. Yeah. Well, we we saw the effects that that match had on Kenny. But oh, uh-huh. but my wife does know. The thing, I'm not act. I'm for sure not trying to get hurt. Sure, you know? sure. <laughs> like, ever. So, you know, that's, you know. We, we saw the effects it had on Kenny, the black eye and multiple wounds in the back. What residual effects do you have from that match? I mean, the same to death kind of, I mean. Do you have a bunch of scars but, on your back? Uh, yeah, but they heal up pretty nicely. If, okay. You know, this little, see, I, I just have like, Millions of like little. Oh yeah! Oh see, yeah! Let's see. I got my millions of little ones. That's from that match. No, this is just from years of this stuff. <laughs> but they kind of heal up well, the way you don't notice them unless you like. I got bigger ones on my back and stuff, but like. It's a barbed wire wedding ring tattoo. Yeah, well, yeah. I get. I don't. I guess it's barbed wire. Kind of looks like barbed wire. Well, see, that's a light tube. That, oh that's my a, god! See how that's a chunk. Yeah. See, I'm not really into that because those take chunks out, and that's just a little one. Yeah. Wow, why it just gives you little mini ones like this? See, like that's not bad. Those actually kind of look cool. I get. I don't. Cool for your profession for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah I, I had an interview with uh, Jimmy Havoc recently. And he was showing me all the scars that he has. Maybe, maybe you guys should, you know, have some sort of match together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that'd be real interesting. I feel yeah, like. I mean, for sure. Well, yeah, we, yeah. well, if we looked back at the last six months, where do we look ahead six months from now? You know, do you have plans for where John Moxley wants to be six months from now? Uh, not a, uh, not particularly, because I think it, right now it's still so new and so uh, week to week. And um, I mean, we're all basically eight weeks in. If yeah. you kind of count it that we started on October second, say you're a new fan who. Uh, discovered us and ch- tuned in our first episode yeah only like what seven eight weeks in so it's still super new and super fresh so we're gonna kind of had to uh see how everything shakes out that being said you know there are a lot of long-term plans and a lot of simple effective long-term booking that you know we're gonna stick to you know that uh so you know a lot of it you know i'm not gonna spoil any of it but <laughs> You know, I think, six, but I just want to be six months from now in the same kind of uh, headspace I'm in mm. now, which is like, just kind of, I don't want to waste any time or spend any time in a negative, uh, in any kind of negative headspace because I'm like the luckiest guy in the world. I'm Life has been so good to me. Uh, I get to do what I want to do for a living. Uh, I'm pretty much operate autonomously as a true independent contractor uh i get to be involved in this AEW at at its birth and get to and it's so exciting to be here part of this is like we're finally bringing a true mainstream wrestling alternative that we've wanted that the fans have wanted for so long and the hunger is there for it and like these fans are so these fans are really driving the whole thing like because it's their energy that's really like I said, it's like a big jam session on Wednesday night. They 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 love Orange Cassidy. They love the Lucha Brothers. They love everything. Uh, they love the women's wrestlers. They they love everything from the last match of the night to the first match of the night. They're there. They're there to have a great time. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not there to heckle anybody. You know, they they want to have a good time. Uh, and the, the just the AEW fans are just so great. Uh, but to go back to your question, just I just want to appreciate and live in the moment of like how fortunate I am, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, kind of pay that forward and do what I can do to, uh, cause you are in a bit of a responsibility when you, uh, you know, I always took that kind of seriously in WWE too, is like, you kind of feel like a responsibility to people once you kind of become a guy in that kind of 
now you know kids are kind of whatever word you want to use like looking up to you idolizing you whatever you gotta you know you gotta think about that too if that makes any sense no it makes sense yeah yeah, I just want to just enjoy life and live in the moment every moment and just get to really be aware and cognizant of the fact that like I am the luckiest guy in the world Mm -hmm. you know I have literally everything Uh, the greatest uh, wife a guy could ever want I have a just I'm in the great place in my career. I still have my health, uh, hopefully a bunch of years ahead of me. And I just want to uh, really just be grateful and be happy for all the, and I just want to live in the moments, you know, and not be, uh, not worry about anything Yeah. and just play the music that I want to play. You know, Yeah. you, you were yeah. very open when you were on talk as Jericho about, you know, what had happened in the past after that episode aired, did you have any sort of backlash from WWE? No, I expected that. I expected it to be way worse. Huh. Like, did Vince really? call you up or someone from the office call you up? No. Really? No, we got nothing. I'm just, I guess, I mean, I assume I'm just kind of persona non grata there now, which is fine. <laughs> uh, but I just felt like, like I did everything right on the way out. I gave uh, my body to that company. I was did everything, did everything right. I was a model employee for them, but I also had to eat a lot of shit. And uh, I think it was more than fair to at least just kind of like tell my side of the story about some of this stuff, just so that now we can start fresh. Sure. Which we did at Double or Nothing exactly six months ago, as you said, and now we're here. So, I mean, that's like, that seems like, that was six months ago, but that seems like a million years ago. (laughs) Like I'm not, I'm not in the same, uh, I was real, yeah, I was real like jumpy and all like, cause you know, I hadn't even, I was still in hiding. I hadn't, that was before double or nothing. It was a couple of days before that we did that show. Now I'm just like in a totally different, uh, headspace, man. If, I'm if, just like, couldn't be more, uh, chilled. If, <laughs> <you know? laughs> like I, I imagine if we look back to the time you were in WWE seven, eight, nine months ago, how different is the person sitting next to me now? Versus if we were to have a conversation back then. Um, I just felt like I had a lot of weight on my shoulders back then. Because mm. I was still, like, so far from the finish line. That it was just a lot of just, like, uh And, like, uh, and for the first, uh, like, once I decided I was going to leave, I wasn't, like, happy about it for a while. I was pretty pissed about it. Because I'm like, are they really going to make me leave? Are they that? They're gonna make me leave, aren't they? They're gonna fuck everything up so bad that I'm. I'm like, I, cause I did, I wanted that fucking money. You know, it's not like I don't like money. I like to put it in the bank and look at it. You know, but I, uh, I was like, I can't believe they're gonna. I can't believe they're gonna make me walk away with most money. They can't. Like, can't you write one good fucking storyline? You, you coined such, one such thing, good shit yeah. out of this, though. Yeah, like, yeah, it just got so. And I don't want to keep going. I've talked about it ad nauseum, like, uh, but it just got to the point where I'm just like, the stuff I described in the Jericho, but it just, it's just like, oh, now you'll come out in a hazmat suit. It was just like, this can't be real. Am I like, am I on some kind of reality show? Is this a new WWE Network reality show? Is Vince actually saying these words? Does he actually run a billion dollar company? This, this is a joke. Like, but did it make it particularly tough that you're? Wife is employed there, seemingly doing really well there, and you're going to basically go, hey, I'm going to go do this other thing. No, uh, made no difference whatsoever. Mm. She couldn't have been more. She was like, you know, because before, I mean, way before, you know, I'd be like, ah, screw it. Maybe I'm just going to Japan. I'm not going to resign. She'd be like, good, don't. Whatever you want to do makes you happy. I'm like, good, maybe I will. Uh because Sean Spears but, uh, she is in a was, similar spot. You know, his wife works there. and Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that's going to happen uh, over the years as AEW, you know, continues to grow and, you know, stay around in the game. I'm sure situations like that will arise all the time. Uh, she had Z- – I even asked her before I did the uh, Jericho show. I was like, is there anything you don't want me to say? And she said, no, say whatever you want. And I was like, okay. So, like, she didn't give a fuck. She's – She's untouchable. She's completely uh, irreplaceable, mm. you know, in her spot, you know. So, uh, 
no fear of reprisals, you know? Yeah. Do you still keep in touch with the Shield guys? Uh, you, know, you get you get in a bubble, you get busy. I mean, not, not really. Not so much. A little bit, you know? Text Roman a little bit here and there. But he's super busy, you know? I mean, he's there so, he's so busy in the bubble and stuff, you know? And I'm busy too, you know? So, oh, well, you, like I'm, you said, you're busier than you've ever been. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, uh, did you ever think that you'd be – Part of something like this, we had all the options on the table, and you were going to leave WWE. What made AEW uh, the best option for you? Um, well, a lot of it was just uh, a lot of it was the timing and uh, the chance to really uh, not just do the things that I want to do, but like change the business and really be a part of this thing that really does create a viable alternative because I can be a difference maker here. And uh, it's, it's like almost like I had to, you know, what this was, it was like the universe is like double or nothing. The timing of it and everything. It chose me, hmm. you know, cause when your contract was up. Yeah. Just that. And even that it was in my hometown, you know, there was just like, there were all these signs pointing and, uh, and I'm, you know, always had good relationships with, uh, a lot of the guys here that you know got me uh that I first started talking to and i was like all right you know i said here's what i'm thinking there said this is what because i was like okay what, what are we doing what's the what's the goal here like see what i want to assess it out and i was like i loved everything they said <laughs> about every uh from the business kind of plan to the ideas to the way we're going to do stuff to the creativity aspect of it or whatever I, I i get and you know i was like okay there was no reason to not jump on the boat and take this journey man like and I'm, a lot of other people would have you know swam back to the island but i'm like <laughs> fuck the island man like let's go let's find some new some new territory, you know. But from the outside looking in, you could go, that sounds really great, but are you guys really going to be able to deliver on all that stuff? Yeah. I mean, but what's the worst that's going to happen? It's a failure. So what? <laughs> you know, like, let's give it a shot. Yeah. Because either, either one of the many uh, startup companies who's tried and failed to, you know, and to gain a foothold and be successful or – Maybe it's the exact opposite, and maybe we take over the entire world. Who knows? <laughs> you know, maybe it's a new wrestling boom renaissance, yeah. and it's which is already kind of starting to be. Yeah. And uh, you know, when you have an, I mean, man, just the, the the opportunity was just so good to to be a part of this that I was like, I'm I'm in. Didn't did not take me long. I mean, I I jumped in pretty uh, head first. And are you still doing stuff in Japan? Yeah, I'll always as long as I'm wrestling, I'll still wrestle in Japan. Okay, and that's another cool thing about uh, AEW is that um, guys can kind of do other stuff outside of outside of AEW. Uh, that um, there's you know everybody's a little different, different things they want to do. Uh, but there's guys wrestling in Mexico. There's guys you know wrestling in Europe. There's guys doing other stuff on the side. I mean, because you because uh, we're not doing that. You know, it, it's not a uh, the schedule's a little different, and you don't have to run everything through everybody to get everything approved, you know? Like, if you want to do a movie on your off day in WWE, you have to, like, ask permission, to, you know? But, like, now you can just – I mean, everybody's going to be a little different. But I can pretty much do whatever else, uh, you know, I want to do, whatever kind of itch I want to scratch creatively or – uh do with my free time you know i can do so it's a but also it's weird because i never i was never really comfortable being home because i never really never really had a home mm. it was always like on the road or different town or couch surfing or whatever before wwe and then you know like uh obviously the last however many years in wwe is on the road however many days a year pretty much when you're home for 36 hours a week for years on end you just yeah. get used to being on the move so like if i'd have a few days off i'd start to feel weird is so that where you're at now no that's what i'm getting okay so like i'd start to feel weird if i was home for more than a couple of days like oh man i gotta get on the move like and then you get back on the road and you feel comfortable again 
They're like, okay, you want to be in a different town every night. Uh, so it took me a minute to adjust. But then I had that full month of just being home. <laughs> and I got a hell of a taste for it now. I was like, ooh, <laughs> this is great. I'll be with my dogs every day. Uh, getting, you know, Just getting a training, recovery schedule, sleep in my own bed. You get more out of your workouts when you're not on a plane and going back and forth to different time zones. Uh, you can get stuff done around the house and keep my garage. I got a gym in my garage. I can keep it clean. The stuff's not around, you know, I can fix the hose or the whatever's broken in the yard you know i can just enjoy the my house right and just and uh go up the street and have dinner with my wife or whatever i'm like i really got a taste for just regular living at home existence where i was like ooh, i like this a little too much <laughs> and then then uh then i've kind of put my foot in the gas pedal stuff and was you know in japan all summer and so forth like that but uh i think next now i'm looking at it because now i have a little bit more control over what i want to do with my time you know as we get into 2020 and it starts winding down a little bit you know i might really keep the might just be like just do wednesdays and that's it <laughs> for the rest of the year just don't call me for anything like if you if you're even thinking about it, don't bother calling me. I'm probably going to say no. Unless you become the champion. Then you're on that champion schedule. What's a champion schedule? No, you're, you're at every event. You're, you're doing every promo. You're doing all that stuff. I already am. Well, then you can't just do Wednesdays. That's all we do, except for the pay-per-views. Well, yeah, the pay-per-views and then, there, I guess, appearances. Yeah, Pretty yeah. Basically, things are pretty good for John yeah, yeah, Moxley. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very, very much so. Yeah. Well, I think that uh, that's probably this is probably the time we should wrap up. So thank you so much. Last interview of the day. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I've all, I'm drained of all uh, brain energy now, fully. You, that's it. You, you got whatever okay. was left in there. <laughs> this is it. That everybody just got it. The yeah, last yeah. of John Moxley's brain right there. Yeah. yeah. So now I got to take a nap and try to work out. <clears throat> recharge or just uh slam a giant coffee I haven't decided yet <laughs> maybe both yeah why not All right. do you have any great advice you want to leave the people with about what whatever I mean you're someone who's uh basically was in a situation they didn't like said I don't want to do this anymore and now you're doing something that you love every single day I think that's inspiring to a lot of people yeah, I mean uh everybody no matter what walk of life you're from you know whatever whatever uh, no matter Whoever you are or wherever you're from, man, you should try as much as you can to just live life for yourself, I think, and not try to live it the way uh, other people say you're supposed to or whatever. And that's real generic advice, but, you know, it's uh, it's real easy to get caught up in other people's uh, expectations and just like you, if you're from a town and, you, you know, there's just so many people that, you know, go to school and then they go to college and then they get a job because they're supposed to and then they get married and then 10 years later they're divorced and they hate their lives and their kids are drug addicts and everything and it's like they don't have and then they have to restart over from scratch mm. because they never worried about what they wanted they did live their life for other people you know or even in like in wrestling a lot of people they want to um they want to accomplish the things they're supposed to want to accomplish which I don't really think that's a good way to look at it. You know, you should, you should, if you do this and you're blessed enough to do this for a living, you should do it for yourself. Mm. Not because like, oh, I want to win 37 titles or this or that or whatever, because that's all just kind of like bullshit. Uh, you should do that. You should play the music you want to play, the way you want to play it, be the thing you want to be and that you, that you, that you love, you know? Because uh, if, you know, I heard a quote the other day because I was looking at this, this interview from Josh Homme from uh, Queens of the Stone Age. Yeah. He said a couple cool things, but one of them was just like, he was talking about putting, playing music and he's just like, you're not playing it for anybody else. You're playing it because you think it's good and you're just in a room playing it by yourself or whatever. And if other people think it's cool, sweet. Uh, but he's like, you have to love it. If you don't love it, 
how can you expect anybody else to love it? Mm. You know, so just do you the way you want to do you. You know, that's all that uh, you should worry about. It's great this advice. Is a terrible interview. I apologize. <laughs> no, that, that was great. Oh, God. Thank you so much. No, totally man. Appreciate yeah. you. Well, there we go. Thank you so much for checking out the chat with John Moxley. That's an interview that I've been trying to get for a long time, ever since he debuted at Double or Nothing six months ago. So here we are six months later, and the interview is happening. I know you're not looking at me right now because this view behind me is pretty awesome, right? This is the view of Chicago here. That's Navy Pier, at least that's what it says right there. You'd think that I'm at a hotel, but no. I met my good friend, one of my best friends, Jake Hamilton's house. Here he is, hanging out with Daenerys. This is who's my dog, Daenerys. Welcome to my licking, home. Licking my hand. Uh, you Welcome may, to my home. You may recognize Jake um, from his many, many celebrity interviews on YouTube. He's the guy who Samuel L. Jackson um, forced to say the N-word. But I didn't say it. But you didn't say it. But the video went everywhere and went got viral. all this yes, recognition. Yeah. Um, so Jake's been my friend for like 10-ish years, and he's like, if you come to Chicago, you are not staying in a hotel. Chris Van Vliet. You're gonna stay in a, in a condo that looks like a hotel. It does, look at, it's like a man cave in here. Yeah. Look at that. This is why I'm single. So, <laughs> thank you for uh, letting me stay here. Thank you for Very checking welcome. out the interview. Jake's single if you have any uh, <laughs> sisters or cousins, or if perhaps you're single yourself. There you go. Um, so thanks for checking out the chat with John Moxley. We are ending the year so strong here. Uh, that was very violent. So strong. Uh, the goal was 50 wrestling interviews this year. And I just counted last week because someone tweeted me at Chris Van Vliet and said, how many interviews have you done? I know your goal was 50. You must have crushed that. Well, in fact, sir, I did crush that. Uh, at last count, I had uploaded 91 videos this year. November's almost over. We still got another month left here. The goal now is, of course, 100 interviews before the end of 2019. We're ending it so strong here. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, if you don't already, if you've been watching these videos and you don't subscribe, please just take half a second right now to click right down there. Boom! Subscribe, and we're going to uh, hit 2020 with a bang!